Good morning. This is the week six. Um, I wanted to help you a little bit kind of finish up uh, act one of Romeo and Juliet. Uh, let's recap a little bit of act one, scene four, and then we're going to spend most of our time today on act one, scene five, which is the last scene in this first act. Now, just to remind you, we kind of have a lot going on in our last scene. We have Paris, um, who had went to Lord Capulet and asked for Juliet's hand in marriage. And Lord Capulet's kind of thinking about it, but says he wants to give Juliet a little time since she's so young. We also find out that he is throwing a party and he invites Paris to this big party at his house. We also then hear a conversation between Lady Capulet and Juliet about marriage, kind of letting her know about Paris's proposal and how technically, even at the age of 13, she really is considered an old maid, supposedly. And that, you know, marriage should be something she's thinking about. And she's saying that maybe she possibly will think about that. We also see that Romeo is still very heartsick about Rosalind, and his friends Mercutio and Benoglio are kind of trying to help him out with that. So they suggest going to the party at the Capulet house to distract him, maybe find another lady. Um, Mercutio goes on to a whole monologue about Queen Mob and about how love and being um, lovesick sometimes like having these dreams shouldn't be taken too seriously and so mercutio as cynical as he is is trying to kind of distract him by telling him to go to this party even though they're montagues and wouldn't necessarily be invited there so we kind of have them sneaking in and getting ready but romeo is still kind of in a dark mood he even thinks that going to this party will be the end of him so let's kind of see what's going on as we get started in the party. So I'll read a little bit of this and then I'll kind of slow down and decode it. And hopefully that helps you. So it says a hall and Capulet's house. So these are just some of our serving men coming, getting everything ready. So first serving men, where's pot pan that he has helps not to take away. He shifts a trencher. He scrapes a trencher. When good manners shall lie all in one or two man's hands, they are unwashed. Tis a foul thing. Away with the joint stews joint stools, remove the court cupboards, look to the plate. Good thou, save me a piece of march pan, and as though thou loves me, let the porter let in Susan grindstone and ill, Anthony and pot pan. Ah, boy, ready. You are looked for and called for, asked for and sought for, for in the great chamber. We cannot be here and there too. Cheerly, boys, be brisk a while, and the longest liver to take it all. So in this, we just have, they're trying to ask each other for help with getting ready for the party. And they're kind of making some jokes about, gosh, you know, we can't be in all these different places at once getting ready. And let's do the best that we can uh, getting ready for this party. So it sounds very busy. Sounds like a lot of people will be there. So enters Capulet, his wife, Juliet, Tybalt, nurse, and all the guests and gentlewomen to the maskers. And again, they're wearing masks in this party. So seeing each other's identity might be a little bit more difficult. It's kind of like a masquerade, um, if you would see. Welcome, gentlemen, ladies that have their toes, unplugged with corns, will walk about with you. I, my mistresses, which of you all, will now deny to dance? She that makes dainty. She, I'll swear, have corns, and I come near, near you now. Welcome, gentlemen, I have seen this day, that I've worn a visor and can tell, a whispering tale in a fair lady's ear. Such would it be pleased. Tis gone, tis gone, tis gone. You're welcome, gentlemen. Come, musicians, play. So basically, Lord Capulet is welcoming everybody to dance. And he says, ladies, if you have toes and you don't have sore feet, go dance, enjoy yourself. Um, don't deny, like, you know, having a good time. And he's saying, gentlemen, come, um, listen to this music, come, enjoy. A hall, give room and foot it, girls. Move light, you knaves, and turn the tables up and quench the fire. The groom has grown too hot, and sirrah, that's unlooked for sport comes well. Nay, sit, sit, good cousin Capulet, for you and I are past our dancing days. So he's talking to some of his family members, some that aren't dancing, going, hey, sit, spend some time with me. How long has it been now since last yourself and I wore a mask? Second Capulet, by lady, thirty years. What man? Tis not so much, tis not so much, tis since the nuptial of Lucutio, come Pentecost as quickly as it will, some twenty-five years ago, then we were masked. Tis more, tis more, his son is elder, sir, his son is thirty. Will you tell me that? His son was but a ward two years ago. So we're just having a conversation between Lord Capulet and one of his family members talking about how long it had been since they've had a party like this before. And for them, they hadn't had a mass party in such a very long time. So this is something that's very exciting to them. And here now we see Romeo, who has snuck into the party. What lady that 
what lady is that which doth enrich the land of yonder knight? And so he's talking to the servant. I know not, sir. Oh, she that does torches them to burn bright. It seems she hangs upon the cheek of night as a rich jewel in Epoch's ear, beauty too rich for use, her earth too dear. So shows a snowy dove trooping with crows as younger ladies over her fellow shows. The measure's done, I'll watch her place of stand, and touching hers make bless my rude hand. Did my heart love till now? For swear it's sight, for I never saw true beauty till this night. And so Romeo just joined the party, and so he sees here Juliet, and he says, oh, she just teaches the torches to burn bright. So like she is so gorgeous that she just lights up the room. Okay, because their torches are something they would use for light. So he thinks she's so beautiful. And then um, he says, This measure's done, I'll watch her place a stand, and touching hers make bless my rude hand. Um, I'll watch her, and I wish I could just get, touch her hand. She's just so beautiful. And then he said, Did my heart love till now? For swear it's sight, for I never saw beauty till this night. So now he's saying, Have I really ever loved before until I saw how beautiful she was? No, her, uh, being with her could be true love. So basically, he's saying, Love at first sight. Um, and almost forgetting about his love sickness and the issue he had with Rosalind. Now he's saying, No, this is true love. And that's just from this moment of seeing Juliet Capulet here um, at this dance. And then we see um, Tybalt responds. And just a friendly reminder that Tybalt is Juliet's cousin. He's known to be more of an evil character. And again, the Montagues are not supposed to be at this party. This, by his voice, shall be a Montague. Fetch me, my rapier boy. What, dares a slave? Come hither, covered with an antic face, to flee or scorn at our solemnity. Now by the stock and honor of my kin, to strike him dead, I hold it not a sin. So Tybalt is totally recognizing that this is Romeo. He says, this, by the voice, should be a Montague. And he says, fetch me, my rapier boy. So he's basically saying that he is going to um, attack him. Even though it's in the middle of the party, he's going to attack him. And says, basically, he's going to attack him because he's going to show his family honor because it's showing the Capulet's dishonor by the Montagues being here, which would cause quite a scene in the party. But Capulet, Lord Capulet, hears this. What, now, what how now, kinsman? Whatever storm you sow. So what's going on, my family member? What's bothering you? And Tybalt says, uncle. This is a Montague, our foe, a villain that is hither come in spite to scorn at our solemnity this night. So he's saying, this is Romeo, one of our enemies. And he's here at our party mocking us. And Capulet goes, young Romeo, is it? Tis he, that villain Romeo. Content thee, gentle cuz, let him alone. I bears him like a portly gentleman. And to say truth, Verona brags of him to be a virtuous, well-governed youth. I would not for the wealth of all this town here in my house do disparagement him. Therefore be patient and take no note of him. So he says, content thee, gentle cause, just leave him alone. Um, he's acting like a gentleman, and to be quite honest, Verona, or the town, brags of him or speaks kindly about him. He's virtuous and well-governed. He actually, even though they're a family of enemies, Romeo has a good reputation. He doesn't get in trouble, and he ha is a good guy. So, um, you know, let's not ruin our party. Just ignore it for now. Be patient. Just leave it alone. We don't want to make a scene, and I don't think he's going to do too much harm here out in the open. He is not known as a bad guy. It is by will that we, well that which, if thou respect... Show a fair presence and put off these frowns, and ill be seeming some of balance for a fee. So he's saying, it is my desire, or will, and hopefully that you respect it, to show a fair presence and put off frowns. So stop frowning, forget about him, enjoy the party. That's why we're throwing this. But Tybalt says, it fits when such a villain is a guest, I will not endure him. So not enduring him means I don't care, I'm not going to put up with him being here. And Capulet says, he shall be endured, so we will put up with it. What good man, boy, I say he shall, go to. I am the master here, or you, go to. You'll not endure him, God shall mend my soul. You'll make a mutiny among my guests. You shall set a cock a hop, and you'll be the man. So he's saying he will be put up with. And I'm saying I'm the master here, this is my house, and that's what I say is kind of final. 
Um, and he says, we don't want to make a mutiny or big fight right here in the middle of like a wonderful party. It's not hurting anything. Let it go. And Tybalt says, why, uncle, tis such a shame. Go to, go to, you're a saucy boy. It's so indeed. The trick may chance to scathe you. I know what. You must contrary me. Married tis time. Well said, my heart. You're such a prince, Cox. Go, be quiet. Or more light, more light, for shame. I'll make you quiet. What? Cheerly in my heart. So basically he's saying that we are just going to forget about this and let it go. Patience preforce with a willful color meeting, take my flesh tremble on their different greeting. I will withdraw, but this intrusion shall. Now something sweet convert to bitterest gal. So he says, I'm going to be patient and I'm going to get to him later. Um, you're forcing my flesh to tremble. So this forced patience is going to make me be full of rage and bitterness. And I'm not going to forget the fact that Romeo came to this party. And so now we have them exiting and we'll see still what's going on with Romeo, who just saw the beautiful Juliet. So he says, good pilgrim, or I'm sorry, he says, if I profane you with my unworthiest hand, this holy shrine, this gentle sin is this, my lips, two blushing pilgrims, ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. So he's going up to Juliet and he's saying that he's unworthy to be in her presence because she's so beautiful. And he makes this metaphor um, kind of saying that they are like these pilgrims, like these holy people. And he says, I want this sin. I, I want you're so gorgeous and I'm not worthy, but I would love to, to give you a kiss. And Juliet responds, good pilgrim. Um, so good, devoted person. You do wrong your hand too much, which mannerly devotion shows in this. For saints have hands that pilgrims' hands do touch, and palms and palm to palm is holy palmer's kiss. So she is saying, you know, you do your hand wrong too much. She's saying you're putting yourself down too much. Um, you're not necessarily unworthy. Um, what mannerly devotion shows in this? What are you devoted to, though? Um, and she does say saints do have hands, and, you know, it's okay to touch hands. And palm to palm is like a kiss and maybe like shake hands here. And he says, well, have not St. Lips and Holy Palmers too. And he says, basically, he still wants to give her a kiss. I have lips to kiss. Um, and she says, all pilgrim lips that they must use in prayer. And so she's kind of flirting and going back saying, well, our lips are meant for praying, not for kissing. And he says, oh, then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do. They prayer, grant thou, lest faith turn to despair. And he's saying, well, let me have the opportunity to kiss you, just like a hand would shake. Uh, um, let faith turn to despair, basically saying, like, this is my hope, my dream. And she says, saints do not move, though grant for prayer's sake. To move not while my prayer's effects I take. Thus for my lips, by thine, my sin is purged. So he's saying, oh, by kissing you and saying, don't move, and I will give you a kiss. You are so wonderful and heavenly um, that you just make me anew and fresh and clean. And so he kisses her. So very forward. And so she says, then have my lips the sin that they have took. And he said, sin for my lips or trespasses sweetly urge. So he's uh, saying that, no, this isn't a sin. You didn't take sin from my lips. Uh, this is something very sweet. And then he says, give me my sin again. And then she says, you kiss by the book, which is basically saying he is a good kisser. So again, here we have two people that just met right away. Um, and Romeo is able to kind of tell her how wonderful she is. And he's able to give her a kiss. And then we see Juliet's nurse. Madam, your mother craves a word with you. What is her mother? Mary Bachelor, her mother's a lady of this house, and a good lady, and wise and virtuous. I nursed her daughter that you talk with all. I tell you, he that lays a hold of her shall have the chinks. So she's saying that her mother is a lady of the house, so that's Lady Capulet, and whoever marries Juliet will be very rich. And then Romeo goes, is she a Capulet? Oh, dear account, my life is my foe's debt. So he's now realizing, uh-oh, this beautiful woman I just saw is a Capulet. That's his enemy. And then Benelvio comes up. Away, be gone. The sport is at its best. So this is a good time to go. Well, the party is at its best. We should probably go so we don't get in trouble. I so I fear the more is my unrest. 
So he's unsettled by the fact that he basically feels like he just fell in love with a Capulet. And then we have Lord Capulet. Nay, gentlemen, prepare not to be gone. We have a trifling foolish banquet towards. It is so, is it even so? Why then, I thank you all. I thank you, honest gentlemen. Good night. More torches here. Come on then, let's go to bed. Ah, sera, by my fay. It waxes late. I'll to my rest. So he's still trying to get people to stay at the party. Come hither, nurse. What is yon, that gentleman? So she's basically saying, who is that? The son and heir of old Tibrio. What he that now is going out the door? Marry that, I think that be young Percutio. What he who follows there that would not dance? So right now she's asking the nurse who these different people are because she's going to try to figure out who Romeo is, but she doesn't want to just single him out because then she might be asked, well, why is that person important? Nurse, I know not. Go ask his name if he's married. My grave is likely to be my wedding bed. His name is Romeo, a Montague, the only son of your great enemy. So she found out the identity, unfortunately, of Romeo um, is a Montague, so it's of her enemy. And she even says, if he's married, my grave is like my wedding bed. So she really um, hopes that he's single, because if not, she would feel heartbroken and like it's just better off to be dead. Very dramatic already for first meeting each other. And so then Juliet realizes not only he's not married, but um, he's a Montague. My only love sprung from my only hate, too early seen and unknown, and known too late. Prodigious birth of love is to me, that I may love a loathed enemy. So she's saying, oh, the only person I love is the son of the family that my family hates. My only enemy is also my love. And the nurse goes, what's this, what's this? A rhyme I learned even now, of one I dance with all. And then we hear one calls it in. We hear Juliet in the background. She goes, Anon, Anon, come, let's go away, and the strangers that are gone. So Juliet is realizing here that she has met and already feels like she has fallen in love with Romeo, but is extremely upset too because she knows that he is her enemy. And that's kind of where we're at, finishing up Act One, and we will see kind of what happens that gets even. Uh, more exciting and our next act. All right, guys, let me know if you have any more questions. Our code word for this video is Gales. Uh, if you want to email that code to me, I can actually give you a couple points for um, participation for watching the videos on your assignment. So just email me that code. All right, guys, see you later.